This is uh, Richard back at you. Uh, today uh, we're pretty excited. Uh, we got Mr. Atkins' uh, 98 uh, Chevy pickup in here to uh, work on. And he brought all of his parts, everything he wants put in it, and uh, some things we're going to even maybe offer him to even upgrade it a little bit even more. So come over and check this out. Now he brought all five pinion planets, front, rear, ring gear, roller clutch hub, hardened beautiful shell, uh, all new drum here. So anyway, all new bonded pistons, bushing kit, all new pump rebuild kit, all new alto high energy clutches all the way through. Got a beautiful Sonex performance kit that we're going to be putting it in for him, all the solid pistons, stuff like that. New Boost valve, I mean everything you could imagine, deep pan, stuff like that. But he's missing something. We've got a really nice Sonex planet here that we're going to try to talk him into that's going to, would really make this thing sing. Uh, change the gear ratio on it so it doesn't have such a big RPM drop. Really worth the money. So we're going to try to talk him into that maybe. Then also, we might try to talk him into the Z-Pack instead of going with a six clutch pack kit uh, with his wide band. Let me get his band. What'd I do with that? Uh, excuse me. Oops, I got it over here. All right, here. This is everything else that he brought. A new filter. New wiring harness kit, new alto band, wide band, really nice. I mean, this gentleman brought it all to us to do, so we're excited to, to do it for him. Let's get this thing tore apart and see what it looks like. It didn't move when it come in. Uh, nope. Barely moved, excuse me, when it come in. Barely. Barely moved. It was on his last leg. Yes, it, it was. a can of uh, fluid and left in it. That's yeah. it. It's been in there a long time really covered. I can't wait to put it in my machine and bring it back out. It'll look brand new. Case and all. So it's just the early design 4L60E. Got my Milwaukee 3H drive here. Man, this thing's uh, impressing me more and more and more every time I pull it out. It's amazing how much torque it's got. I mean, you just feel it hitting really hard when it hits. It's kind of like it uh, hits, hits, and then loads up or something and really hits hard. Pretty crazy. This thing is just really nasty. See all that metal on that speed sensor there and stuff? It's like a magnet. It just draws it to it. Bushing's just almost totally wore out. You can look at the yoke really good on the drive shaft. Get our vent hose off. I always like to give these just a little squirt of something to get them moving. Kind of use my. Huh? Sounds gritty. Yeah, it does. It's got a lot of metal in it. Something. This thing's really dirty, though. Really dirty. I so say just a stock servo in this thing. He didn't bring me a Corvette servo or anything for this. I don't know why. That's kind of odd. Uh, it wasn't on the list, but what we'll do is we'll put the kit in, see how it works that way first, and then. Uh, See if it even needs a Corvette servo. So now we're going to use our Milwaukee uh, three-inch drive to take these uh, cover bolts off here. And believe it or not, I was shocked it would do it. I mean, 
You normally I use a half inch drive. It actually worked even on my uh, uh, extension over there for my half inch. Looks really good, but this thing here will do it with yeah. the extension. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I said that right. I think I got it mixed up a little bit, but that thing works really good. Because normally I'd be using this big old thing with this on there, and I just knocked it out with this. <laughs> it's like, yeah, let me tell you. You can see this thing's pretty nasty. Feels like it's almost got the original pan gasket on it from the factory. These paper hard gaskets like that usually are original stuff. But that thing's We're so pretty, smoked. pretty thick. Pretty thick. Oh, yeah. Has that got the right filter on it, Trent? Nope. I think it's got a two-wheel drive filter on it. Yeah, it's got a shallow normally, filter. Um, this is the one here that, okay, explain it, that it should have them um, little tabs underneath here. Yeah, to hold it up right. off there. Let me get this off here. If you notice, this does it. If you use this style filter, the correct one will have little legs on the side right here. Yep. They'll stick up about this high all the way around. That way you know the neck's long enough to extend the filter to the bottom of the pan. See? Well, this one here has that built into it, see? How it extends it to the bottom of the pan. It has legs on it. See? Well, this filter don't have the legs on the bottom, but so they put the legs on the top to extend it down and put a longer neck on it. So this thing here physically, if this seal wasn't really good and tight like that is right there, this thing would have fell off. And he would have been sucking air and it would just burn the tranny right up instantly. So yeah, you kind of got look, lucky there. Yeah, it doesn't even look right. See, it don't it's even... It's cocked. Yeah, yep. see, it don't... He's see, lucky the right. seal was good. Yeah. You are right. He probably changed that seal out uh, when he put that new filter in there. And a lot of people don't do that. They just, oh, seal, throw it away. And they just shove the filter back up in the pump. So. Right. Wow. PWM solenoid here. These seals get really drawn up in all the solenoids right here. These solenoids hardly ever go bad unless you coat it out and you see that the solenoid's bad when you scan it with your scanner. Uh, other than that, just change the O-rings, put it back on because a lot of the new stuff, you take a big, big chance um, of putting bad stuff on there if you ain't careful. So. I actually got a solenoid tester. I went to go grab it, and I, uh, and I forgot I broke it the other day. I shorted it out. If you ever touch the two wires together, even with it just not turned on, it'll pop it. So I'm going to bring that in and show you guys. Um, oh, there it is. I'm sorry. Get this park linkage off there. Part detent spring, I call it, I guess. Yeah, you you see me do that, huh, Trent? I'm some noise too okay i've been doing this 40 years and i've been wake up. singing to that music there for a long time mm -hmm. so it's kind of hard to totally get switched over but i do enjoy using that thing just a real early switch which he's got a nice switch on it's got a cover on it remember that i showed you earlier yeah. so 
course, this is just going to be a stock unit. Nothing's going to be done to the lockup solenoid or the valve or anything like that. We'll check here, see. Nasty. Yeah, we'll pull the pistons out. Because this uh, Sonex kit we're putting in this valve body is awesome. We're going to be doing a lot of stuff to it. So. It didn't come with a new plate, though. I was kind of shocked there. Uh -uh. Uh, that kit looked... Uh, pretty nice uh, but we didn't get a new plate so we'll just be using your whatever the kit tells us to do basically don't want to change it around too much uh. Now he did give us solid uh, accumulator pistons and stuff. It won't have no pin in it. I believe we'll be knocking the pins out of these and stuff and using some crazy stuff over there. I'll try to do a little video and show you how it's done. So even the one in the forward uh, is changed up too to a solid uh, no pin style. So you can see here that ball is just about beat plumped through the plate again. So. We're going to have to address all these holes. Just make sure you have a round hole, round hole, and you build it back. Make sure it says valve body and case. Valve body case. Mm -hmm. So, same way here, we're going to be putting a solid accumulator piston here that he sent us in that kit over there. So, it's going to be exciting to do something a little different than what I'm used to doing. For sure, because uh, what I do works too. So, but I put it all in, see how it works. See if we can learn something, even, because we're always into learning. Get your park stuff out of here. The tranny don't smell really bad, as bad as it looks, huh? No, surprisingly. Yeah. I'm telling you, that Colorado with that additive in it was pretty bad, wasn't oh, it? Oh my gosh. Yeah, actually, I'm going to do a little quick video on that. Uh, really, I forgot to pull the forward drum and stuff oh. apart in the video, so I'm going to do a, a little quick video of that, too, here pretty soon. Okay. Actually, after this, if I can do it real quick. It be a different video, but yeah. So that just means. Go subscribe to the channel. Yes, sir. Hit the notification bell. Yes, sir. There's always more to come. We're never going to run out of material to work on and do. So we've got a lot of teaching to come, and we're going to be learning a lot the same time you guys learn. So if we see it, you see it. If we learn it, you learn it. And there's always something interesting. Yeah, that's that. Uh, we... That's every day. That's every day, Trent. Never a dull moment. No. That's your standard pump. Now, if you look here, even on this uh, tranny here, you can just see the, the converter's almost pulled plumb out of the gear. Now, this is a stock torque converter, stock tranny, never been touched. This is from GM. Now look how much that converter's pulled out. It's almost too far. More than halfway. Yeah. So we would space that in. We, we want to grab more of that gear. So especially when you put a 500 boost valve in here or something like that, something that's going to torque up on this pump gear a lot harder, then you definitely want to grab that whole gear right there, That, that these two, because there's only two of them. You know, if you had six, some would be a different story holding it on the converter. There's just two of them. And they'll break them right off, so. Uh, let's look this out here. Oh, get an idea if I go home. How to... All the bluing's almost gone. Plum off. Isn't that crazy how it gets uh, in splotty like that? Mm -hmm. See, it's almost metal to metal here. Wow. No bluing. You know, spotty. It'll and, start just grabbing it, huh? Yeah, once it gets that coating off there, you know. If you put that back in in a high a boost valve with new paddles, <laughs> it's going to wipe that dude out really quick. Right. Because you're putting so much more force on the pump. Gotcha. So.
That's like a slippery surface. Mm -hmm. So just dainty. I mean, this is a really nice stator body. And stator. Sweet. Of course, the old band's just gone. Smoked. Just totally smoked. Now, this being a 98, uh, we definitely want to put a pressure gauge on it, watch all of our pressures and stuff like that on this unit. All right, I just want to look in here and check this drum out, because this is nothing. This is just staining. Look how flat that drum is. Really nice. Really nice. Mm -hmm. I, almost egg-shaped, almost like this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But we'll do it, you know, when you do it, just go around two or three spots. All the way around, look at it. Yeah, you can't even see it there. Uh-uh. Clean it up again, go to another spot. Look at it. Just yeah, see what you got. Nope, disappears. Yeah, it just yeah. goes away. So, Sweet. we look at it even more, you know, when we get it cleaned up and inspect everything. So, take our time, slow it down. Now, I know y'all realize that every tranny that we've been posting, uh, that you see me tear down, I build. I, I want to do build video videos and show you guys uh, what type of builder I am and how good I am at building and stuff, but I do so many and I am so busy and I am so thorough that I really ain't got a lot of time right now. So I just hope y'all watch and enjoy what I do and what I show you guys because I'm really trying to show you everything that I know. So. Uh, take it to heart, believe me. It's Sunday right now. So. <laughs> but we enjoy. I enjoy. Oh, yeah. Look at your sun gears, both sides of your teeth, stuff like that. You know, look at your sprag assembly. Three, four clutch is a goner. She gone. But look at this. These. Look how much spring load I still have on my load springs. I mean, it's good. really good load yeah, right there. Good. And so, the pop the plate out. Yeah. And it did. Yeah, yeah you can see you it. See it? Hey, so yeah. They're really nice. They look some good ones. Yeah. The old three, four clutch is totally gone. Hey, But you gotta look at all these because you could have one of them weak. One down flat almost. You see this here, there's nothing there. They're there, but there's mm -hmm. no hardly, because the good ones are stiff. Hey, that feels real stiff. This one here's not really, that's really stiff. Stiff, yeah. See, so you just got to look at them all, because just because, uh, don't think all of them's good when you look at them. I always keep all these plates here too. Anytime we put an Alto uh, 14 clutch kit in, you have to have a good backing plate, or a ply plate, excuse me. Um, so we keep all of them. This is an apply plate, this is a backing plate. There is a difference. So if you didn't know that. I always check this little bearing. Don't have, you don't have to pop it apart. You can tear it if you do, but just take it apart and clean it. Put a hard load on it. Feel for any roughness. If not, it can whine. And now you think it'll be a pump. Now, we got some forward clutch here starting to strip too. If you look here, Trent, how the teeth are starting to almost gone here on this clutch. Mm -hmm. See? Uh, backing up, same thing. Throwing it in drive before you come to a stop. It's really hard on these teeth. So, uh, which this is a, I believe it's a pretty young gentleman's truck, so I'm sure he's probably uh, likes to get where he's going. So a lot of kids back up, drive, back out of the drive, throw them in drive. Or just, they're already on the floor before they got them in the gear before, they're already at their destination before they even yeah. get in the truck, you know what I mean? So it's like, boy, this is a nice hub here. I've seen these blow plumb out before. We had a video I showed you guys where it was blow plumb out in the center. And that was a first. Yeah. Let's look for any chattering on this inner race. 
a lot of times these little sprags will not even spin on this one. They'll only spin on this inner one and, and never spin here. But and then I can't get them and sometimes they'll spin here, not on the inner. So this one here has been spinning on the inner, not on the outer. Crazy. Mm -hmm. So you just want to look for any chatter marks. This thing looks really nice. Yeah. Normally we almost have to replace every one of these when we come in. Of course, we'll put a dual cage sprag in it, which he didn't. No, I don't nope. think he brought that nope. neither. So we'll. Definitely. We got a lot of other things we're going to be doing to this unit uh, besides what he wanted us to do. So get our band anchor out of there. I just did, did that, that huh? <laughs> I just did that. So we just got your standard uh, input hub here and thrust washer. I'll be changing that out, but what do we got here? We had something crazy going on. Dang, I was hoping to see something. Carnage. Carnage, dude. yeah, no carnage. Felt like it had a lip or something where it wouldn't come out. But we'll be changing this whole hub right here and putting a roller bearing here, which he brought all that to us too, along with his five pinion planet. Or maybe we can talk him into the Sonex. I'm telling you, he'll love it if, we, if he could do it. But I'm telling you, it really turns these trannies into something when you do that. It makes them move a little mm -hmm. easier. So shell's starting to strip a little bit. I'm starting yeah. to see it down to there. The standard, yeah. See, we're starting to... Right. Mm -hmm. To wear there. It's crazy how they have that rub there, and they don't take it out or nothing. Mm-mm. The washer, no. metal against metal. Yeah. I mean, it's really just a thin plastic type washer, so there's really not much of a load on this thing because it's really nothing there. Yeah. They make a brass one too, uh, that you can put in there. But the plastic, I've never had an issue with it. Right. And your sun gear. I don't think his five, yeah, his five pinion planet comes with a new sun gear too. So, oops, he'll be getting that. Just look at both sides of it for any pitting. Gentle cap. Yeah, some of them I gotta get aggressive, but some of them I don't. And then, of course, the last is our anti rattle spring there for center support. Now this one here, we're going to be taking the wave out because I believe he's going to do a little bit of playing, I'm sure. He bought a lot of nice stuff so to, to play with, so we're going to make sure he can do his thing. So we're going to get rid of this wave, add a couple of steels like he showed you in a, an existing video. Get rid of that. Get rid of these four pinion planets. Always just check your rollers, your washers. Going to upgrade to a five. assembly here clean this up really good just remember always scotch bright all these uh, surfaces like this for your sprags when you can uh, we use this green scotch bright I mean it works really good I mean really good I buy every piece I can find I think I said that once uh, because it just is so good I don't think he brought a wide sprag neither which I have one laying there and another one over there so we got that covered too Sweet. So, not too bad. It's going to be pretty nice. I got a lot of new toys to play with over there. That's one thing good about working here. I get to open a lot of stuff, so that's pretty exciting. I got Mr. Fluman's uh, really nice power glide we're going to be putting together. All of his parts finally come in, his thrust plates for his pump and stuff like that, too. So, we got a lot of things ahead of us. So, y'all stay tuned. If you need anything, give us a holler. Have a good day. <laughs>